Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome back to the English with Kirsty podcast. Um, I'm doing another interview today, which I'm really looking forward to. And I think it's also worth pointing out that this is the power of online networking because um, I'm talking to somebody that I didn't know a couple of weeks ago, but it was only because we, we both knew someone or know someone and she introduced us because I was asking about people to come on the podcast. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really good. I'm really glad that having connections with people means that we can also meet the people that they know and for you it means that we get new podcast guests as well so that's a good thing so hi Serena welcome to the podcast hi thank you so much for having me Kirsty I'm delighted to be here today yeah it's great that you're here maybe you could start by telling us something about you and what you do so yeah sure get to know you um, I'm a social media strategist and the founder of Social Click a small digital marketing agency I'm Romanian. I moved to Dublin in 2007. And despite the rainy weather and despite the fact that my English was pretty basic when I moved there, uh, it felt like home. Ireland felt like home. I I like Ireland. I don't know. I just fell in love with it from the first day. Um, About me, in general, I'm pretty boring to say, so I don't do anything exciting. I'm reading. I'm walking. I love food. I love people. I love people and I love helping people. Um, my background is in pharmacy and wellness. So maybe that's explain, you know, my passion to being around people. Mm-hmm. Um, I consider myself extremely lucky and I try my best to be grateful um, every day, to find reasons to be grateful every day. Um, I think that my positivity and um, being authentic helped me to achieve uh, many of my goals in life. Yeah, I think that's so important to be, to be you, to be authentic, not to try and be someone else. Like, you know, everyone's sharing more and more information on trying to, you know, like on social media, trying to, to get attention. But if you do that in a way that isn't authentic, people see that and then it doesn't, doesn't really work for you, does it? It's people want to do business or just to, to meet with, with real people. Definitely. And I know when I, I start going a bit on social media, um, I've been even suggested to, you know, cover my voice, to change my voice. And I was like, well, no, I no. I would never do this. I would It wouldn't be me. Like, I, I won't do it. People are doing it. But I think for me, being authentic and not being afraid to ask questions when I struggle or when I didn't understand, especially because living abroad, I still don't get all the jokes. I'm bored. Oh probably half of the jokes I don't understand. Uh, but I'm asking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's, you know, it shows that you're interested because sometimes, you know, people are just nodding. And like, yeah, yeah. And you know, they haven't understood. But if, if you don't ask a question, you don't have that opportunity to, to start a discussion or to learn something. And I think that's important. You know, not understanding something is an opportunity to learn something new. It's not just, oh, I didn't understand. Why don't I understand? It's OK, maybe I can learn something that will be useful in the future. So yeah, I think sometimes we focus so much on the idea of like making mistakes or not understanding, whereas really it's it should be the focus should be on learning something new and discovering something. Definitely. Which is more fun. <laughs> so you work with um you are multilingual and you use um I think you use primarily English in, in your business now. Um, but what do you think are some of the advantages of being multilingual as a business owner and how does this help you in business, the fact that you can speak more than one language? Oh, God, the fact that I used to speak a bit of French, but I have to be honest, I lost it. English is my only foreign language. And actually, because I'm living in Ireland, I shouldn't call it like this, but it's not my first language, unfortunately. Um, Well, for me, English, using English um, is freedom and opportunities because, you know, a different language not only that helps us when we are traveling, 
it helps us to communicate better with people from different backgrounds, different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, our days also increases the job opportunity and increase the job opportunity even if I would be in Romania working here because it's a big requirement now to speak another language. Uh, also, if you are moving abroad and you don't speak the language, you will not be able to work in your area of activity, even if you're very skilled and qualified. So mm -hmm. definitely job opportunities. Um, um, for my business, English is everything. I think a combination of English is social media, it's everything. Because firstly, I have access to so many trainings, courses, mentors, who are all international, like everything it's it's online and it's in a different language if i wouldn't speak english i wouldn't be here today from many points of view like the books in english that i didn't have access years ago in romania everything also meeting so many people from all the corners of the world and being able to communicate with them it's amazing mm -hmm. also the clients like i i don't have any romanian client everybody's not it's in a different continent actually and it's amazing it's the best thing. Speaking another language for me, especially speaking English, uh, it opened me so many doors, opened so many doors for me. Yeah, and I think that's, especially when people are talking about something that's maybe developing their business, um, you need to, to be able to speak to them in their, the language that they want to express themselves in. Um, it's, it's not exactly the same, but I... I, you know, I'm an English teacher and I, I speak English with the people that I'm training, but um, sometimes with my German clients and now my Romanian clients, um, sometimes they want to tell me something and they do it in the other language because particularly with beginners, in, in my case, um, if, if they're not able to do that in English, and if you can connect with people in the language in which they feel that they can express themselves most easily, then, then you can really build a, a good business relationship with people. It's helpful for them. And also from your point of view, in terms of, of working with the clients, understand you know, what they want, but maybe some of these clients only speak English and you wouldn't be able to work with them otherwise if, if you weren't able to speak English as well. Oh, definitely I wouldn't. And especially I do even, it's not my speciality, but we offer copywriting. So many times I do all the copywriting for certain clients. So I need English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how about moving to Ireland then? So you said that you, you really like the experience, you feel at home there. Um, did you notice any big differences? Or what would you say the, the biggest differences between life in Romania and life in Ireland? Well, there are many differences. I think... In my case, maybe I didn't notice things so much or didn't bother me. But the main difference, I, I consider the main difference is the fact that Romanians, we are very more old fashioned and very formal. While Irish people are relaxed and informal and they're very welcoming. I think this is the main difference and probably the Irish music culture, which I love. Like, mm -hmm. I really like this aspect of uh, Irish people. Um, we are a good, um, like, as people, we are good communicators in Romania too. But Irish people are more friendly. Maybe because they do have different culture and um, it's different. Like, the diversity is far more increased in the cultural diversity is far more increased in Ireland comparing with Romania. But the main thing is people are extremely friendly and very relaxed comparing with us. We have a background um, with a communist background. Okay, so it sounded like it was a, a really positive experience from you from the start, which is great. And, and I imagine this, this friendly behavior helps helped you when you were coming as, as somebody that was new to the country. Um, but did you have any language related challenges when you first started working there? And, and if you did, how did you overcome them or who helped you to, to overcome them? Um, was it easy? Uh, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Like uh, uh, it was exciting, but it, it wasn't easy. Like um, all the expressions, things that, you know, I learned in school, like it is, it's different. I had a basic, I understand the main words, but the way that people communicate, I would not always understand. But I presume um, somebody could see me potential from the very beginning because I got a job in a pharmacy without experience in a beauty counter for the first, uh, my first job in Ireland um, and one month there. So somebody gave me the opportunity and believed in me. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
the most difficult part was, as I said it to you, speaking on the phone, but also when a year later I started um, a pharmacy technician course. And it was the very first time when I had to write in English, like on an official level. Mm -hmm. That was tough. I think it will take me double or triple uh, the amount of work comparing with everybody else in the class. And um, I've been lucky. I had really good people I work with and they all became my friends. So I could go and work and just ask them, do you mind just to check this for me? Mm -hmm. uh, just to be, you know, grammatical and the spellings and all the basic. I don't want you to tell me if it's wrong or right. I just need to be correct to not embarrass myself in front of the, the class. Mm -hmm. That was the most difficult part. I, I would put probably so much work in something that was basic for other people. But I think in, in doing that, it, you know, it, it really makes you your determination to, to keep going. I think that's that's a great thing. Like you have to sometimes that there are times that you do have to work harder than the people around you. But I think if you if you can learn something from that and you can develop other skills at the same time. So it's it's valuable. But also, I think, you know, maybe you ask these people for help and that was great that they did. But they would need help with other things like we all need help with with something maybe you wanted help with your text but then there's something you could do to help them as well so it's it's about you feel a bit vulnerable sometimes when you ask for help but I think um it's taken me a long time to, to learn it but everybody needs help at some point you know like and if you ask for help that's not that's not a sign of weakness it's just a sign of saying hey I, I need help with this and later on you'll need help with something else and I can help you and you know it, it can be mutually helpful <laughs> yeah it, it's true but no it was very nice without the girls I couldn't make it because I needed the support and they were all there for me the pharmacist the manager my colleagues everybody supported me in the journey or if I'll have assessments I could even say oh can I come only four hours in tomorrow and they understood me and support me so I was really lucky and I saw your potential because I think that's you know we have our personalities and of course if you're working in another language you need to learn that you need to improve you, you need the skills to do that but at the same time um people will understand how how you are as a person and and if they like you of course they're gonna they're gonna try and help you because they want you to succeed and i think sometimes um when i'm talking to clients you know people are focusing on, on language skills or, or maybe developing them but you know um if, if you have good relationships with people, then people are going to want you to succeed. They're not looking, oh, she made a mistake today. But, you know, yeah, there are situations in which that can be critical. But most of the time, um, people want to see you to, doing well. Yes, it should be like this in any case. But mm. uh, I still consider that, you know, not everybody is the same. And I, I've been blessed to have such a team at the time. And made a difference for me, make a difference for me. And it helped me grow. It was the first step towards qualifying in Ireland. So it was great for me. Yeah. And of course, I guess, especially in a, in a public facing role, you're going to, you don't know who you'll meet. So as long as your, your core team is good, you know, you may have members of the public who are less friendly or less helpful, but you know, that's it kind of says more about them than it does about you. So it's um, learning to, to remember that, that, you know not everybody we meet is going to be equally helpful but you know as long as you're doing your best then they may be having a bad day and, and that's not that's not your fault and it's also not your problem so you did mention about the, the telephone um so what happened with the telephone why was it difficult at the beginning and, and how did you start to feel more oh. confident about using the telephone. Wow, I wouldn't even, I actually, I was thinking, I didn't even go closer for the phone, maybe for the first two years in Ireland uh, while I was working in pharmacy. It, um, I wouldn't understand. I, I'm, I literally would not understand because the names are spelled so different. There are different, completely new names. For, they were completely new names for me. And the spelling was in, like they were Irish names. Mm. So I would not be, I wasn't familiar with the names with the surnames and I wasn't familiar with the addresses. So being on the phone, I just, I was so afraid that I would not take the right name and we wouldn't prepare the medication. We were talking with people who, you know, were not patient and they were, weren't well, so they needed the right service. I was really afraid of it. I also, like, 
I think it's very difficult for everybody because I've worked with uh, people from all over the world and I work with lots of students during my, my years and I, nobody would just jump on the phone to pick it up in the beginning. Um, for me, maybe it was more particular because at the time I did not realize my hearing is very bad. Like I have hearing aids both sides. So my hearing is 30%. When I was on the phone, probably some sounds were lost. So that made it more stressful, but I didn't realize at the time. Mm. I didn't even know it's a problem. I was just thinking, you know, I don't understand, but I'm not 100% now. That was just the English it, or was, you know, the hearing um, had a part in it. But in the end, I the same, the team noticed and they said, look, you have to pick up the phone. Doesn't matter if you do a mistake or not. We will look after you. We will help you. You just you will never be able to be on the phone if you don't take it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I got tricky. I could take a few, you know, a few letters from the name, a few from the surname because I was going straight to the computer. I already start to know better the systems and everything. So I'll find the person easier <laughs> find the trick way. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that was a difficult part for me. That was the most difficult part. But that was, yeah, the, these challenges, if, if you don't try to do something to, to to work on them, they never go away. Like something like that. If you hadn't done it, it would always have been a problem. So although the first steps were probably the hardest to go and pick up that phone because you don't know who's going to be on the other end of it, um, that that meant that you can could start to to deal with this problem and then to to find a solution yes true the, the phone was not my thing and then later when I was becoming manager if somebody was asked to talk to the manager was definitely a complaint so the phone mm. was not the best thing to get better does it <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 it was not my thing and I think that's that we've all got things that we don't massively like I think it's good to challenge ourselves sometimes to to at least try them but it doesn't mean yes like now as your um do you prefer doing a lot more on video because it's not just like the phone when you can see the person and see their facial expressions and do you find that better in your job now? No, I think it's both ways. It's easy because, you know, with all these AirPods and things I can hear and if it's a oh, phone, okay. Uh, it, it's easier because I use them both for videos on phone if, if of or if I'm on the phone, um, I only wear my hearing aids if I'm in public or if I do a workshop or it's a big meeting. Like if somebody's close to me, I hear. So I don't need not need them. Yeah, so it sounds like it wasn't a language thing then. I mean, of course, if, if you can't hear something clearly, it's going to be harder to, to understand. Yeah, maybe I'm just getting older now. No. And I'm <laughs> in the way. <laughs> I know. It, anyway, it. I got it. And I, I do truly believe that you never learn something and you not, never know if it works until you try it. So I had to try to do that thing and um, I managed it in the end. Yeah. And that's that's the success story that, that you did. You, you tried it. You had support from good people. And that's another lesson, I think, you know, to to learn from your story. Sometimes we think we have to do everything on our own. And your story shows that we don't, you know, and it's better if you let people help you um it's it's kind of different when you, when you're running your own business because i i don't need to use I, I decided to learn romanian i don't need to use it in my business i've started using it because i'm working with more clients but at the beginning i i had so much help from from different people who all wanted to see this project work like who you know who gave some time who corrected things who who helped me out and i think sometimes if you're learning or improving your language, sometimes you think you have to get there on your own, but really you don't. There are lots of people, maybe not everyone, but you will find people who will be willing to help and you can learn and improve a lot faster if you allow other people to help you sometimes. And I think your story is a really good example of that because you did work hard, you know, you studied, you, you did things that were challenging for you, but you also had a good team of people behind you working with you and, and helping you out if you needed it. Yeah, I probably it's, um, you know, many people are saying, and I believe in it, uh, the secret to success is to surround yourself with the right people. Um, mm. So I, I've been blessed. I, I choose good people. Like, you know, when I can choose, I always go for the people who are positive, people who enjoy helping others, people who like to grow together. I think in business and life, it's about giving because then comes back to you in a way. Mm. Yeah. 
That's true. And and how about the people that, that you like to help? So what kind of people do you like to work with? And what's the challenge that you, the biggest challenge that you solve for them? How do you, how would you define your favorite type of client? I don't, I, I like to work with um, big challenges in general. Um, I like the, the strategy part because I think helping people, I think where I do social media strategy, I can use every knowledge that I have from mental health, psychology, supporting people because I understand people. So now this helps me to understand businesses because every business is about knowing the person, knowing the client, knowing the owner. Um, I prefer to work with people who are open-minded, people who understand that they need to take action, mm -hmm. um, people who are willing to, to do what has to be done mm -hmm. and people who trust me. In I need to have a trusting relationship because if you hire me, you need to trust me and I will trust you and I do my 500%. Um, so now I start doing uh, helping more people to launch their digital products. Like now I'm helping someone to launch a membership. It's actually a massive project and I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and a digital course. So it's just my clients are, we have to resonate with each other. We need that click. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a long term journey. It's not only a month journey, it's a long term journey and we will grow together and they will grow and I'll support them growing. Um, this is my favorite project, especially it's challenging to start from to say zero following and start having a profit. And mm -hmm. it's more challenging actually, actually to work with people who have a huge amount of following but they have no money out of it. Like they, nobody converts, nobody goes to their website, nobody buys. Mm. That's really challenging too, because the client has to be educated in the way what's important, what's not important and what means actually digital marketing. It doesn't mean random things and lots of people. It means the right people in yeah, your Yeah, because if they're not engaged, they're not, the numbers don't really add value because they're, they're maybe not the right people um yes and yeah that, that doesn't help if you haven't got the right people following you yeah but there are many people you know we all learn from our mistakes and we move on and we we change things and we improve it and this is in business too if it's the case our cases when we have to start from scratch everything because it's healthier for them. There are things we can adjust. Depends on the platform, depends on the business. Uh, but I like to see results. I like to see the excitement. And the main thing is when I like the, I sometimes I can be pushy. Said, look, this has to be done by the time. And mm -hmm. I was working with somebody yesterday. He said, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's give us a deadline. Like this has to be done by then because. And he was like, I love this at you. Like you yeah. are nice and pushy in the same way. You get things done. <laughs> well the thing has to be done and has to be done and um i like to i'm there is no fluff about me you know i'm straightforward i expect the same for the client things have to be done we do it and then we keep going like try to be efficient and to use less time to do things because it's not worth to you know planning a lot and thinking too much and overthinking we have to try before you see if it if it works or not especially mm -hmm. our days yeah. I love what I'm doing. Yeah, I think you can feel it. I really love what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, that, that gives this positive energy that, that passes on to the clients. So I'm going to add your links to the, um, there'll be a page on your on my website with, with this interview. Um, and you can also link from it from wherever you get your podcast. But where's the best place to connect with you online? I think LinkedIn um, or my uh, Facebook profile. I turn my profile into creator. Um, so Facebook will be and LinkedIn probably my most most of my connections were coming from LinkedIn um, and it's funny enough when you open a social media agency everybody will expect you to be very active there but my priority were, was getting clients and my clients so now slowly I start prioritizing myself so people will be able to see me online more often mm -hmm. than I used to be. Yeah and it's important because you, you always need this new flow of people coming towards you people finding out about you so I'll, I'll add your LinkedIn and any other links that you want me to share and um, yeah thank you very much for being on the podcast it's really good talking to you and, and hearing your story your tips what you've learned and I would encourage other people to to go and, and check out the links and to, to find out more
Um, I know you've got a blog as well. So um, we'll, we'll add the link to that. And if anyone wants to find this episode, um, you can go to the show notes page, which is um, englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 209. Thanks again for joining us. And to everyone else, have a good week and have fun learning English. Thank you so much, Christy. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.